Hello, hello, hola, como estas, slow baja, amigos. My heaping dose of gratitude goes out to Edward Emery, my son. Uh, about a month ago, folks, I had a crazy accident here in San Francisco and fell, and I broke both elbows and cracked a rib and cracked my scapula, and Edward had to take care of this decrepit old dad for about three weeks straight until he had had enough and I had had enough, and it was the Nora 500, so I loaded up my 1971 FJ40, no power steering, crunchy old non-synchronized three-speed transmission. I drove it 600 miles down to Ensenada uh, for that event. The Slow Baja Safari class was a great group. Uh, the Baywatch Chenwith, the uh, S14. Uh, we had uh, Jay and Blass in the Bronco. Uh, we really had a, a great turnout. And I want to say uh, another super thanks to Dave Watts, who led the group through the all the off-road stages. I took the cer- ceremonial start in the morning, met everybody for lunch, uh, in the afternoon and thank you to jeff hill at baja bound for picking up the tab for tacos on day one out at valley tea we had fabulous case of tacos uh, at uh, asados moreno so thank you baja bound for that and um, again when we got in at and the evening well, after the checkered flag dropped out came the fortaleza you know nora has a, a great formula they have a a really rugged off-road day and then you come in and there's a uh, terrific party every night great food great entertainment and i i made the rounds and uh poured uh using my little tyrannosaurus rex arms poured uh tequila fortaleza for the uh, folks in their uh, souvenir slow baja shot glasses so it was a great great fun time we had a couple nights after in the valley uh, the valley uh valle de guadalupe the baja visitor ted donovan and i had a, two days to unwind down there and see some new spots and record some podcasts so uh it was a really a terrific trip got a bunch of recordings to share and without further ado i'm going to tell you about today's show michael squire the Baja Bug Movie, it's making its premiere. I'll be there, Newport Beach Film Festival, October 15th. Um, keep an eye on Slow Baja for uh, more information and more showings. I believe this one is sold out now. Three showings is sold out. But uh, anyways, check it out, Newport Beach Film Festival, The Baja Bug Movie. Without further ado, Michael Squire. <laughs> Hey, this is Michael Emery. Thanks for tuning in to the Slow Baja. This podcast is powered by Tequila Fortaleza. Handmade in small batches and hands down, my favorite tequila. Hey, I want to tell you about your new must-have accessory for your next Baja trip. Benchmark Maps has released a beautiful, beautiful Baja California Road and Recreation Atlas. It's a 72-page large format book of detailed maps and recreation guides that makes the perfect planning tool for exploring Baja. Pick yours up at benchmarkmaps.com. It's slow Baja, and I am in the beautiful Via Marina Hotel. <laughs> the timeless the Via timeless, Marina. The timeless, yes. Uh, Meaning it hasn't updated since it was built. Exactly. The beautiful, timeless Via Marina Hotel for the Nora 500, and I got to see my good friend Michael Squire, and we are... Sitting down here and doing a podcast to catch up on the Baja Bug movie. So, Michael, hey, yeah. how are you? Ah, I'm doing great. Film is done. The film is done. I have tickets to the premiere. Can't New- wait. Newport uh, Film Festival. It's premiering. Yep. Yeah. So it's been a two-year process. Almost died quite a few times along the way, but finished the thing. And it's been an amazing process. And, you know, I started this out to make a film that ultimately I wanted to watch. It didn't exist, and I wanted to watch a film that didn't exist, so I made one. Um, There's been so much support from the whole community that has made this possible, and it's really that that's gotten it to the finish line, you know. It's been crazy, you know, and for it to be now completely finished and in the Newport Beach Film Festival and now... Not only one, but three screenings because that's the, amazing. The that first really one sold amazing. out within a week, and then the second one sold out and or is almost sold out because they uh, they increased the theater size so they could hold more, and now they added a third on closing night. And uh, per the festival, they told me that it's actually the most popular film in the entire Newport Beach Film Festival. Wow, it's the top film that they're all talking about. So it's it's pretty crazy for 
something that was, you know, a solo project that started with an idea that I got inspired by, you know, a Baja bug that my friends and I brought back to life to now see it where it's, you know, more popular than the things that, you know, have had big studio funding and, you know, tens of millions of dollars put into it. And this is something that I funded myself with and then, you know, ultimately got the support of sponsors to help me get it across the line. And it's, you know, those companies that have done that have been huge. And those are the companies that are in it for the right reasons. You know, I didn't partner with companies that were just in it to make a quick buck. And there's a lot of those in this industry. So let's roll through those real quick. Let's give a quick, couple quick shout outs to your, Definitely, uh, your you sponsor know, role on Slow um, Baja. Supportive. Exactly. It's, you know... It's very apropos that, you know, we're here at Nora, and uh, the very first Mexican 1000 was won by Vic Wilson in uh, Myers Manx. And right. Myers Manx has been a huge supporter, and they stepped forward as the title sponsor of the film um, and really helped me get it across the finish line. And, you know, companies like Rugged Radios have helped keep me going the whole time, and Baja Bound Insurance, and MP, and Mobile Wagon, and... Um, even new companies that are just kind of starting out like Slow Ride Garage and uh, then there's companies that have been in it since the 60s like Buggy Whip that are that have that history and, and really want to support it and it's it's really cool to have a lot of that support and then some of the, the newer guys like Blake and his company Shreddy have been very supportive and helped getting, uh, getting everything across the finish line and it's really been it's been instrumental and those partnerships have allowed me to do a lot more than you know I would have otherwise. Well, let's talk about some nuts and bolts about a passion project, a film that you've you've made. Um, can you can you even calculate the hours you shot? Hours I've shot total that I've shot is uh, well over two, I think two hundred at this point. Wow. I can tell you that it's um, what was it? I think it was like one hundred and seventy three terabytes. The stuff that I shot, I shot most of it in 6K raw, two cameras. Um, Yikes. And that's just what I've shot. That's not including all the archive stuff. Right. Which is in the hundreds, if not thousands of hours. I mean, I have stacks and stacks of VHSs from the 80s and 90s and, you know, thousands and thousands of feet of film, you know, Super 8 and from the earlier days, you know, from the 70s and even... Uh, from the original Mexican 1000, Mike Perlman was able to find the original 16 millimeter film from that first Mexican 1000. And as part of their sponsorship and their support, they are actually, we were able to rescan that at 4K. And so wow. the stuff that you'll be able to see through this is stuff that you've never seen. Like I had never saw these details. Like I didn't realize, you know, at the, the start line, Ted Mangles was smoking a cigarette when they left the line. <laughs> or, like, when they pull across the finish line, uh, Vic Wilson was halfway through smoking a cigar, riding shotgun. And when I had talked to him, he had told me that as soon as they hit the pavement, he pulled over and told uh, Ted to get in. You're driving the rest of the way. So I know that as soon as he pulled over, he got in that passenger seat and lit up that cigar. And so the length of that cigar was how long it took him to get from the pavement to the finish line. And it's little things like that that you don't see anywhere. And, and like, even just tonight, when, uh, before we went to dinner, uh, you introduced me to Cole, right. whose father drove the Bilstein bug in the seventies. And I just happened to have footage, a, a ton of footage of his dad driving that he didn't even know existed. And it's like, I was able to show that to him tonight. And like, it's those things like his fa his father had passed yeah, his, away. His father just passed. Yeah, yeah and so yeah. you know I could see it when I'm showing him this footage of his dad driving that it's it's this car that kind of is that fabric that keeps him together, mm -hmm. and that was kind of the inspiration of why I started it. You know I saw that connection that a, a son had to his father through a car, and so <clears throat> it's just one of those things that through this story, this film, it's really just about telling the story of these people that have created something from something that never should have been able to do what it did. And ultimately it's, it's a great collection of stories that gives you kind of the idea of what a bug and Baja bug and what it really is more than just a car. You know, it's about the community. It's about thinking differently and pushing yourself. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really something that 
regardless of whether you're a car person, a race person, a bug person, it doesn't matter. You know, the things that the guys that race them now go through is, you know, they're still racing on the same course as these, you know, half a million, million dollar trophy trucks, but they're doing it in a 60s bug and they're taking 48, 50 hours to do it. And these guys are doing it in eight. And, but those guys are doing it the way that it was started. They're doing it with that heart and that passion and they're doing it to prove to themselves, not just to go as fast as possible. And there it's, it's something different. You know, it's, it's those, ultimately it's those guys that never got the attention they should have now. I mean, look at it. Like it's kind of <laughs> up that it took this long for a documentary about Baja bugs to be made. I mean, well, true, but here's an opportunity, right? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that's that's ultimately why I made it was because I wanted to watch it. Yeah. And it didn't exist, and it was something that it needed to exist. That story needed to be told. And so it was one of those things that I felt a, a need to do. You know, I felt an obligation almost. Once I kind of realized that that story had never been told, I kind of felt that obligation that I needed to do it. Um and then I finished it, and I edited the whole thing. I sat and I locked myself away. I actually, you know, hurt myself and broke my face right before, and literally locked myself away for a month and a half, and sat down and edited the whole thing. And uh, then when I was done, went and took went and skated, <laughs> took a day off, didn't think about it, and then I went and sat on my couch and I smoked the joint and I watched the movie that I had waited, you know at that point five years to watch <laughs> that I had to make myself because I wanted to watch it and it was I enjoyed it you know it, trying to take a, a step back it was it's it's something that's fun for anyone and people that have seen it enjoy it and it's I mean the reaction that it's had in the Newport Beach Film Festival from those that have seen it there and they like it it's it's something that you wouldn't expect looking at a film about a bug well, let's talk about some of the people that that you interviewed. How many interviews did you do? Well, I interviewed a lot of people, and it, not everybody made it. Of and course it's not. not. You know, and, and that's not to say no that anything is better than the other. It's just the way that it flows. You know, it's it's not the entire story. It's a, it's different stories that help tell the story. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that there's any way you could ever tell the whole story, but through this and through, you know, other projects going on. And no, I'm not doing a Baja Bug movie too. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there are other stories that need to be told and along with this, you know. And so there are things that didn't make it in, but um, honestly, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you how many interviews there are in there, but there's quite a few. Um, it's, I'd say in the 15 to 20 interview range, but it's not... Nothing feels rushed or short, you know, it's, it, it's pacing and timing is, is something that is very important to me, you know, it, that, that flow from one scene to the next and how it shouldn't ever feel forced, you know, every single frame of a film should have a reason for being there, it should push the story forward, and so I had to make those hard decisions in the editing room of, yes, I love this, but it doesn't do what it needs to do to tell the story, and so those are the decisions and I had to make them without any personal judgment or personal feelings with that in mind. So I'm sure there are some people that didn't make it in there that won't be happy and I'm sorry, but it's just the way it goes. And it's one of those things that I tried to do right by the story, you know, the, the story of the Baja bug the best I could. And let's talk about when was that first Baja bug approximately was it gary emery who had the first he was among the first for sure yeah to uh i'm not sure that he was the first but i i'm a, my sense is he was among the first and he was certainly one of the first to have it popularized or publicized yes so do, gary, I, do I have that right you can feel feel free to correct me yes okay that's yes so gary created the first quote-unquote baja bug you know pretty much the first finished Baja Bug. The, the, there had been other things before that where it's pretty much chopped and cut to give you that same clearance. And, and even the first Mexican 1000, you have stock beetles racing. Um, but what he and his brother and his dad did was different. You know, they 
create a finished car. You know, his dad was a hot rod guy. He he had Valley Customs. He made these amazing cars. And so with what Gary's idea and, and the help from his family, they were able to create something that was not just chopped and ugly, like what you'd seen before, where it was, you know, something that had gotten in a wreck, and it's like, okay, you cut off the front and the back, and you can lose some fenders, and you can raise it up a little. But this was something that was thought through, complete, you know, painted. It had that, it was that first thing that sparked that, uh, I mean, I don't know. And it had presence. Yeah, it it was. It was a complete concept thought from beginning to end and executed beautifully. Exactly. And then, so there was, um, and ultimately that was, a kit was made from that. So you have uh, Drino, Drino Miller and, and Sanford Havens, who worked at Myers Manx at that time, uh, building bodies for Bruce Myers. Um, and they would get parts from Gary Emery, who worked in the parts department at Chick Iverson VW in Newport Beach, which is why I wanted to make sure that the premiere was in Newport Beach, because so much of the history came from sure. there. You know, the meeting to start the first Mexican 1000 was there. Myers Bank started in Costa Mesa right there, and you have all that history right there. So to have the film premiere in Newport was just kind of, it had to happen there. Um, and so Gary working there, they started to build it in the VW dealership in the back. And so as they would come to get parts for the Myers Minx, they would come and check out what he was doing back there. And when he had it complete, they came to him and asked him if he was going to make a kit and sell it. I said, no, I, don't, I just wanted one. I just wanted to go be able to take my family out where all my friends were with their manxes but i needed I had, he had two kids at that point and so he needed to be able to take a family and uh so they ended up making a kit so they took that and made a kit from that and that was the first baja bug kit that you have um and then there were others from there and you have you know different variations from that like burley burlow took it to another level and diff- you have all these kind of branches that go off from there but it was really that was that start of it and it uh it took off from there and then you know in the 70s and 80s it was mostly volkswagen based you know the majority of what's out there i mean i have the footage to show it it's 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 great you know it's it's so cool to see all those cars racing and then it's it you know it's still going today so it's I don't remember what the original question you asked me was. <laughs> no, it's <but> late. <laughs> it's late. We're both, uh, we both had a couple long days here, and it's great to see you here in Ensenada. And Ensenada, that must this community must figure somewhat prominently into the film because oh, this is huge. this is the epicenter of the seemingly the, the Class 11 builds and racing. It's, yeah, I mean, it's it's the epicenter of racing in, in Mexico for sure, and so much of it happens here. And, oh, yeah, there's there's a lot of it that takes place here, and, you know, in the shops, and there's... Ensenada is a huge part of it. You know, it's where a lot of it really generated, you know, started from, and it, still today. And so, I mean, I have a studio down here. I come down here all the time. It's it's funny, the all my friends down here, they call me the, the local gringo because I tend to know the back roads and everything better than they do. So they're like, oh, no, you go this way. I'm like, no, 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 you go this way and this way. And then they're like, oh, shit. Local white gringo knows where he's going. Yeah, <laughs> white boy knows. Man, there's some rough streets in this town. I was driving all over this town in February and there's April. Some big and potholes. There are some yeah, well, big potholes. I don't think potholes. they're potholes. I think they're more like you yeah. have a little bit of road left. Right, exactly. It's good suspension testing for when I got the ARB. Hey, thanks, Cruiser Outfitters, for that ARB suspension. <laughs> well, we're going to take a quick break here, folks. We'll be right back with Michael Squire, so sit tight. Here at Slow Baja, we can't wait to drive our old Land Cruiser south of the border. And when we go, we'll be going with Baja Bound Insurance. Their website's fast and easy to use. Check them out at BajaBound.com. That's BajaBound.com, serving Mexico travelers since 1994. Hey, we're back with Michael Squire. We're talking the Baja Bug movie, which is premiering at the Newport Film Festival. This podcast will be out just minutes before that premiere, so... I hope you folks get the message and get a chance to see it or see the links and follow the film and hopefully get a chance to watch it uh, when it when it appears at a film festival near you or 
on what uh, what platform? Where where do these things go from this? What happens in the film business, Michael? Well, you go since to a this big is a, show, they devote a, three screenings <laughs> to your first film. Then what happens? Actually, it's my fourth film, but fourth film, definitely the first in this kind of world. Um, it's ultimately going through the film festivals is the best way to get it ultimately sold through screening um this has been i mean this is exactly i mean the definition of an independent f- film you know i pretty much financed it myself for the majority of it and then was able to get that support going but it's going through those film festivals is how i can get it out there and get it the right eyes to to get that distribution going um i mean ultimately worst case scenario it goes on amazon prime um I plan to keep the, the physical and, and theatrical rights so that I can do distribution of DVDs, which most DVDs aren't, you know, and Blu-rays, there's not much out there. But with the amount of people that I've had asking for it, I can see that there's a, a large demand for it. So what I plan to do with um, <clears throat> sponsors is sell it through them. So through, you know, MP and Rugged and, and Mobile Wagon and companies like that, um, pretty much all of our sponsors, you'd be able to go through them to get it. Um, and that way it kind of keeps it all connected and allows it to go through a different kind of stream, a little different than normal. And then um, after I'm done with the film festivals, then I'll take it to theaters, you know, so that, but in an independent fashion, you know. Um, of course, I'll do some down here in Ensenada. That's definitely a given. As we were talking about uh, doing one at uh, Cerveceria Transpeninsular. Exactly. You know, yeah. Colin's great. And I love it over there, and I think that'd be a perfect place to do it down here. Yeah, um, I think that back parking lot could be a cool drive-in. You could might you might have the whole thing filled with bugs. Yeah, there's might, definitely might be, a few. Might be a bug-only event. Yeah, I think down there would just automatically be a bug only yeah. event. But we With were talking Lino, about you get the the voucher roll right yep, to the right get to get all the these buggy and get everybody out there. And no, I mean that would be a lot of fun and i definitely plan to do a few drive-ins um we've been talking about doing one with baja bound um in san diego and and even possibly one <clears throat> with rugged up uh northern california or middle of california um royal grande kind of around there and then so those are definitely in there and there's definitely going to be at least one or two where it's bugs only drive-in because you have to have to you have like to. how can i let it like you have to the visual of that would just be too good i mean like give me this hypothetical you have a drive-in theater it's all bugs and there's like one forerunner or, you know what i mean or a highlander right in the middle or you know in a minivan it's like okay come on get yeah. it out <laughs> yeah 1979 and older yeah. please <laughs> if you have to smog it leave it home <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly all right well uh you probably haven't had much uh uh, of a regular life since then, um, shooting, 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 and then you locked yourself in the editing suite. Yep. And now you've got Newport uh, committed yeah, I got the to Newport Beach ju- Film Festival. They've got the the premiere. I'm going to the 15th there at October, and they've added another showing on closing night. Actually, they added two more. So they added two more one showings, yeah. on uh, Tuesday the 18th, and then they added another one on Thursday the 20th, the closing See, I was, night. I was trying to do the BBC recap of what we just listened to. <laughs> just recap it all and then wrap it wrap it all up with a bow here but uh i'd i'd uh i'd slam those events together so that's that's pretty impressive um is there an interview i i don't want to ask if there's a favorite interview but give me one that stands out and tell me about a connection you've made with somebody along the way that just maybe surprised you a little bit you oh know? man i mean i've met so many amazing people along the journey you know people that are in the film and people that aren't and i couldn't really pick one and I would have, I would be, because I, you know, it's as I think about one, then one leads to the next. And it's, you know, there's, there's one nice, th- I, I, there's one section of Vic Wilson's interview that I like where, you know, he's talking about, you know, his backup plan in the first Mexican 1000 was a bottle of scotch. <laughs> you know, he didn't have a radio. He didn't have any GPS. He didn't have anything. He so if a, he broke down, he's he got a bottle of scotch. He was sit there and, and drink. Well, there you go. <laughs> and that was, you know, and, so, you know, it was. It just Jake, shows are you kind available of the, for a podcast? I think we might have something to talk about. <laughs> right? Now he's ready. Got to bring the tequila Fortaleza in and just have that as your first go-to. There we go. But, uh, 
there's it's it i i couldn't pick one you know it, it all goes together and it it's hard to take them out and that's why like you'll see the trailers and stuff that have come out since i can't cut them <laughs> dave uh from finishing school post has been cutting those he did a great job uh doing all the sound mixing on the film and he really made it come to life with that and so without his help it wouldn't have been anywhere near what it is and so a huge shout out to dave um dave becker thank you buddy hey have you spent um you know it's a it's a goal of mine to to race a leg of a of a distance baja race in a class 11 have you spent any time at race speed in one of those yeah things? yeah uh Maybe. For sure. Um, like, I've raced with uh, Eric Solizano in the 500, and I've definitely, yeah, and have some plans on building a car with MP in December, actually, that uh, I don't want to say too much, but it's going to be something special. Okay, that uh, we'll keep, it'll be something that we'll, as the build will be going, we'll do a web series on it and uh, include some of the people from the film and and uh, it'll be a nice surprise when everybody sees what it is. Awesome. Well, I saw you at Hector Sarabia's ranch. I think that was in February or something where we yep. crossed paths out there. I had my uh, my boys on their vintage uh, British bikes, and we were doing our, our slow Baja uh, uh, winter expedition. Yep. And uh, you showed up, and Hector took me for a ride, and I, I tried to film it, you know, one hand with the, with the phone and one hand uh, holding on but i really quickly had to put the the phone away because it was just a lot faster than i thought it was oh be. yeah you didn't expect it to be a, yeah they they this whole was, ass. yeah this was just his little home you know ranch loop that he does to well, you, for, you for, do realize that his home ranch loop is also the score racetrack okay well there you go. <laughs> hector does have he some lives connection. right on that he does that, have some connection to that yeah yeah so his ranch is right on the the racetrack but they're fast i mean yeah. Class 11s are fast, and then when you get, you know, 516s are fast as well. And, you know, when you get in, like, the 5 Unlimiteds, those are really fast, you know, for, you know, a bug. You're doing, you know, 100-plus off-road. And that's really fast, folks. At Slow Baja, I'm just not sure about that, but I need to get in <laughs> one. And if somebody's got a trophy truck out there and wants to do some testing and throw me in for a couple of minutes, I do need to get that done, too. Well, so the other thing is you got... Blake Wilkie, who built a trophy truck Baja bug. Crazy. So it's got all the attributes of a trophy truck, but a, a bug. So he took three bug bodies and made one and ultimately made that evolution of the Baja bug so that he can keep that bug alive, but in a place where it'll get a little more media coverage because, let's be honest, when you watch a lot of the live streams you know, from the big races... Bugs don't get this much love. Nora, they get more love. You know, Nora gives a lot of love to that, and it's it's really cool. But when you watch a lot of them, it's you know, it's about the trophy trucks, and I get it. You know, that's what sells. It's marketing dollars hard at work, but that's not the story I'm telling. I'm telling the story about the guys with heart that do it for the right reasons, that are in it for their passion and their love, and not just to make a quick buck or you know to build a, a billion dollar industry even bigger from you know just trying to make money off of it and the guys that are in it and the guy the companies that i work with are that you know i had that's one of the things that i had the the fortunate the fortune of of being able to choose who i work with you know being able to fund this myself the companies i work with are good companies that i am proud to call you know friends and sponsors and partners going well, forward I know, I know a little bit about that in my tiny world of slow baja here yep. so michael i think we're going to leave it right there i just want to say Perfect. hey thanks for making a few minutes for me here we just had a lovely dinner and we're both exhausted Always. we've got early call for the uh, nora 500 tomorrow morning i'll be out there at 6 30 in the morning so I'll thanks for making a little time 5 30 where's the best place for folks to find out about the baja bug movie so the Baja Bug Movie dot com. The Baja, Baja Bug, Bug Movie dot com. On Instagram, Facebook, you type that in anywhere and it'll pop up. All right, the Baja Bug Movie, folks. Michael Squire, hey, thanks, man. Appreciate you making some time. Thank you so much, buddy. Have I told you about my friend True Miller? You've probably heard the podcast, but let me tell you, her 
Vineyard, Adobe Guadalupe Winery is spectacular. From the breakfast at her communal table, bookended to an intimate dinner at night, their house-bred Azteca horses, Solomon the Horseman will get you on a ride that'll just change your life. The food, the setting, the pool, it's all spectacular. AdobeGuadalupe.com. For appearing on Slow Baja today, our guests will receive the beautiful Benchmark Map 72-page Baja Road and Recreation Atlas. Do not go to Baja without this, folks. You never know when your GPS is going to crap out, and you're going to want a great map in your lap. Trust me. Well, what a delight it was to get Michael Squire back on Slow Baja. He was a terrific nurse mate. He'd been out and about and picked up some Tylenol for me. Just a, a great guy. He's made a beautiful film. He's got everything. Every ounce of his being is in this thing, and I can't wait to see it on the big screen. The Baja Bug Movie, you can find that anywhere, social media, at BajaBugMovie.com. Uh, Newport Beach Film Festival, three sold-out screenings. Can't wait to see it in person. And if you like what I'm doing here, well, you got to drop a taco in the tank. It's time. Do it, please. Joe Dean, hey, thanks for your support, amigo. It's great to see you in Baja. Thanks for uh, the night at Who Songs. That was a lot of fun. Uh, your Baywatch Tenneth is a terrific vehicle, and I hope that comes back out for some slow Baja safari uh, uh, fun in the future. All right, I'll see you down the road. Um, you can always reach out to me, slowbaja.com. Hit the contact button, Slow Baja on Instagram or Facebook. Send me a message. Tell me what you like, what you don't like, who you'd like to hear. And uh, until then, to paraphrase Baja loving Steve McQueen, Baja's life. Everything that comes before or after is just waiting. <laughs>